Hey guys, so I get a lot of questions from my friends about how you'd go about moving um, the Bitcoin you got on an online exchange like Coinbase up here, but how you'd move that from your online Coinbase wallet to a, a hardware wallet or an offline wallet and why you would do that. Um, so I'm going to start with a why because it's pretty important. Uh, basically, when you buy Bitcoin online through Bitcoin Exchange, it stores those Bitcoins on a online wallet. And while Coinbase itself has had, as far as I know, a stellar reputation for security, and they haven't had any hacks, other online wallets in the past have. And those have resulted in people losing their Bitcoin permanently. So uh, one of the ways you can safeguard against that type of loss is taking the Bitcoin from an online wallet, creating a offline wallet or a cold wallet with a cryptographic key using a program called Electrum and then transferring it from one wallet to the next. And then we're also going to just briefly go over kind of the different types of Bitcoin wallets that there are in, in the sense of uh, SegWit and non-SegWit wallets, um, some of the compatibility issues, um, and then some of the workarounds that, that exist for it. But basically, what we're the objective of this is to teach you and get you familiar with the different types of wallet types. And then the third wallet type that we cover will be the one that I recommend um, for people who are starting out with Bitcoin because it's a SegWit wallet, but it's backwards compatible. And again, we'll go into all of that about what all that means. But the first thing you want to do after signing into your Coinbase wallet is to get Electrum. If you're using a desktop computer, I strongly recommend Electrum. Uh, otherwise, you can get some apps that also support the wallet I recommend that I'm going to link um, in the description. Uh, they're just iOS apps. I don't know of any Android apps. I'm sure there are some. I think Mycelium is one that support it. But if you know any Android apps that support this backwards compatibility thing I'm going to get into, just give that to me and I will update the description with those. Anyways, I love Electrum because it runs on Mac, Linux, Linux and Windows. Um, it runs really well. It's widely supported and the experience is basically the same. So I'm going to open up Electrum like it's the first time. Okay, very first time you open up Electrum, it's going to ask you about servers. If you don't know anything about that, you don't need to. Just hit Auto Connect. Next. Now it's going to ask you for the name of your wallet. So for the demo purposes, I'm going to go over some wallets that, I, again, I don't actually recommend you start out with, but it's good to be familiar with. And then I'm going to go into the wallet that I recommend that you start out with. So you can just kind of follow me along during this or just watch. But I wouldn't recommend using the two wallets that I'm about to create, and you'll see why. So I'm just going to call this the old wallet. This is the non-segment wallet. Um, every time you give a wallet a name, it's going to ask you what type of wallet that you want to create. You're just always going to stick with standard wallet. Uh, all this like multi-signature stuff and everything, you don't have to worry about. You can look that up if you want to. But if you're just getting started with Bitcoin, and you just want to move it around and store it. Standard wallet is your best bet. Now it's going to ask, do you want to create a, a new seed or restore a wallet using an existing seed? So a seed is just a way of embedding a cryptographic key into a series of words. Um, so instead of having people write down super complex uh, cryptographic keys, you can just give them a string of words that can regenerate that key. So in this case, we don't have that, right? You're just starting out. You just want to create your own wallet. So we're going to select create a new seed. Now it's going to ask you the seed type. So again, since I'm doing the old style and showing you how Bitcoin addresses used to be, I'm going to keep it on standard. Hit next. It's going to give us the seed. Now, since we're taking our funds offline, it's stored locally on the computer or the, or the phone when you use these kind of wallets, when you go from an offline wallet to a hardware wallet. When you do that, though, if you lose the hardware wallet, you lose the keys and therefore the access to your Bitcoin. So you don't want to do that. So you want to back up your seed. You can click this button and use the QR scanner on your phone. Or you can just write these down, but you want to store it somewhere securely. I would not recommend just writing it down on like a plain text note application or anything unless it's very, very temporary. But I would recommend, you know, writing it down on an actual like physical paper and storing it 
where you store sensitive documents like your you know car title or social security card or whatever um, or store it in an encrypted database on your phone using an application like one password or last pass but we're just going to copy and paste right here for demo purposes because once you hit next it's going to say okay confirm the seed it wants to make sure that you actually backed up the seed like you said you did and that you know it correctly so we're going to hit next now it's going to ask us for a password on the seed so what we can do is uh, if you were going to use this in the real world you would want to put a password on it because that way it's a second safeguard against somebody spending the funds from your Bitcoin but uh, for demo purposes and because I'm just gonna go over this wallet I'm just gonna keep it blank alright so we have the old style wallet so if we go to receive when you go to the receive tab it'll generate the addresses you need for uh, other wallets like coinbase to send the money over so this receiving address you can see here starts with the one you can see that you have uppercase and lowercase uh, letters right so it's case sensitive and this is how all Bitcoin addresses and Bitcoin wallets worked up until August approximately so what happened well Bitcoin changed the way it stores information on blocks using a technology called segregated witness or segwit for short and you don't really need to know the technical underpinnings of SegWit. There's some really interesting stuff that I can share with you if you want to talk about it, but it's beyond the scope of this video. Uh, but basically, from an end user perspective, SegWit allows you to send Bitcoin from one SegWit wallet to another SegWit wallet faster and um, with lower fees, sometimes 50% or greater in, uh, in fee reduction. So if you're getting started in crypto, and I mean, if you just use Bitcoin in general, it's really good for you to get a SegWit compatible wallet and these old styles are not SegWit compatible and you can tell they're not SegWit compatible because they start with a one so in Electrum you can create a SegWit wallet and we're gonna go over that but the SegWit wallet Electrum had you create has its own downside and then we'll go into this third wallet that I think is sort of the best of both worlds um, but we'll go ahead and enter this in. So we'll just call this SegWit Wallet. We'll keep it at standard. We're going to create a new seed just like before. And this time we're going to check SegWit. Okay. So now we got our SegWit seed. I'm going to hit next. Confirm the seed. And again, I'm going to just skip the password for demo purposes. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at this wallet. Whoa! Receiving address is totally different, right? All the receiving addresses start with BC1 if they're full SegWit. Um, and you can see that the address scheme is longer. It's also not case sensitive. You could send this all in uppercase letters and it would still work just fine. Uh, however, if we go over to Coinbase, right because the whole point of this video is to move bitcoin from one to the next from from your online wallet to your hardware wallet if we go and copy the segwit address get out of this really quick okay if you want to send bitcoin from coinbase you select the bitcoin wallet that you want to move from you hit send and then you paste you paste the address in there and you can just get that from the receiving addresses but whoops look please enter a valid BTC address so coinbase doesn't recognize this as a real address but it is so what's going on well the thing is is that coinbase uh, the wallet software that they use the online wallet software they use is actually pretty outdated and they are in the process of upgrading their infrastructure to support SegWit and they said that they're sort of aiming between early 2018 ish uh, it's a big endeavor for them I guess um, but if you have a SegWit wallet that uses this BC1 numbering scheme old wallet software can't send to that and that's not good now if I go back to the old wallet 
because again the software in here is outdated. If I go to this old standard wallet, okay, cool, I can send Bitcoin. Let's say I want to send 40 bucks, but look, $16.84 in fees. So the reason why you want to start using and going to the Bitcoin or to the SegWit wallets is because you can cut down the fees that you pay and the confirmation times will also be faster. Right? But if you want to get the money actually out of Coinbase onto a hardware wallet, the new SegWit addressing in Electrum doesn't work. The old ones do, but you really, especially if you're starting off, you haven't created a wallet, you haven't moved anything off of Coinbase, you should really just create a SegWit wallet, right? You shouldn't even mess with this stuff. So there's a third option that gives you the best of both worlds. It is a SegWit wallet, but it gives backward compatible receiving addresses. So that way you can use a service like Coinbase, send it to your new SegWit wallet, and then when your SegWit wallet sends to other SegWit wallets, you get that benefit of lower fees and faster confirmation times. And then if it sends to a non-SegWit wallet, well, that's okay because it's backwards compatible and it can still send funds to that. And you'll just pay the normal fees that you would anyways. So how do you make that third option? Well, that third option was created by something called a, a scheme called BIP39. And uh, Electrum doesn't like BIP39 from a technical standpoint. So they don't let you generate BIP39 seeds. However, you can import BIP39 seeds into Electrum. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a BIP39 seed on a website. And then we're going to take that seed and we're going to use that to import into Electrum. And now we'll have a wallet that is backwards compatible. So first thing we want to do is... Um, this is something that generates a seed, right? And earlier I said that that seed is really important. That can regenerate your wallet, right? Well, this is a website, so why would I want to generate a seed on that? I mean, if I generate a seed on that, right, Spanish, right? Well, who's to say it didn't just send off a copy to the owner of the website, and now they can access my Bitcoin wallet, right? That's a security nightmare. So uh, what's awesome about this website is it's a JavaScript application. So once the website's loaded, you don't need to be connected online to generate the key. So we're going to disconnect from the internet, and we're going to generate this key securely. So, let's see here. All right, give me just a second. Go to our adapters. Disable. All right. So let's show that we are indeed disconnected from the internet. Ooh, ouch, okay. So now that we are disconnected, we're gonna hit, we're gonna type in a passphrase to encrypt our new key. Or no, actually we don't even need to deal with the passphrase right here. Okay, we're gonna hit English. Cool. So now, we have our BIP39 key generated offline. Store it somewhere securely, because this is the wallet I recommend you use. We're gonna enable that network interface. We'll come back online. Cool. Look at that. Alright. So now we're gonna go to Electrum. We're gonna go to new. Now I actually recommend again using this wallet if you're creating your first hardware wallet on desktop. So I'm just going to call this default wallet. You can name it anything. Keep it at standard. And now this time, we're going to say I already have a seed because we want to put in that BIP39 one. Before we copy or paste anything here, go over and head up to options, check BIP39 seed. Now you'll see here that Electrum doesn't like BIP39. And they have a technical reason for why they don't like BIP39, and that is because it doesn't embed things like um, version numbers and stuff for software to read. But the only thing that you need to know from an end-user standpoint is that BIP39 is very helpful for you because it will allow you to send and receive Bitcoin from on, uh, old wallets and new wallets and still get to take advantage of the benefits you get from the new wallets. So, pasted the seed there. You can see that the checksum is okay. Next, now it's going to ask for the der uh, derivation. We actually want to change it from 44 to 49. 
and that is what will help it that's what causes it to generate the addresses that are backwards compatible so again this is the path this is the type of wallet i recommend you use in the real world if you're starting off so that being the case you should absolutely set a password but i'm not for demo purposes okay so if we can go over here to receive and look at that we have a wallet address that starts with a three it's not super long like the segwit the pure segwit wallet is but it is a valid address we can tell it's a valid address because we'll go over to receiving address coinbase paste it in there boom valid address so now you'll see you're still paying the network fees you're still paying the same as you were if you were sending it to the old wallet but the good news is is once the funds are in this new wallet this backwards compatible wallet you can send it to these old addresses and you can send it to these new addresses and when you send it to these new addresses or any address that starts with a three that's a segway wallet you get to take advantage of those reduced fees and faster confirmation times so uh, let me know what you think about this video leave a comment uh, hit me up with a direct message if you have questions or suggestions and as always have fun sending and moving crypto around the web